I'm excited about today. Today's going to be a, a good episode. Today's we're good. we're gonna we're gonna try to fucking understand me. I, I think today's gonna be my favorite episode just because a lot of we had a lot of shit happening, a lot of a, a lot going on. Yeah, because what what happened? Our last conversation was what after we signed up for Gracie? What was that on Thursday or Friday? When we were, I don't remember what day it was, but we had just decided that we were going to go do the tournament. And Friday, yeah, yeah, Friday. yeah. Thursday, Thursday, Friday, Thursday, and, probably, yeah. And neither one of us have been really training for it. Uh, I think I trained happened. once that once that week, like maybe on Monday. I don't even know if I did that. I think you trained on your own, and then Thursday we went to headquarters and got in like a, a little bit of rolls the last half of class. Um, yeah, exactly. The, right at the end, got some rolls in. Um, no, we were busy like a couple weeks before that earlier. Uh, I don't think you had a babysitter for one week, and yeah. actually, I wasn't in Arizona too. So if you want to. Look at the whole month. No, we, we really had not not a lot of training going yeah. on. I mean, See, except that, for the yoga. And, and that's why I told Eddie when he asked me if I'd been training hard. I said, no. So we're really. at the gym and, and we're rolling. And <laughs> Eddie comes up and goes, oh, man, what's up, Mark? You been training? Yeah, you've been training hard? And I was like, no, <laughs> not really. <laughs> but, uh, but no, I, but also with the You're yoga. You're so honest, but with, yeah. With the yoga, I hadn't been really hitting it that hard either, no. just because we weren't meeting up that much. But now, lately, I've been doing a lot more. I've been doing it in my backyard. Uh, even though it's more yin stuff, I think I'm getting even more from it. Yeah. So that's the stuff that's Going helping slow. me the most. So we sign up for Gracie's. We go to Gracie World, we do Gracie Worlds. Yeah, and it had and an interesting start, too. And, dude, the whole the whole day... So the the night before, I was thinking about it because, dude, I was I was I didn't really want to do it in a way because like one, the last one's been kind of crappy. They haven't been great. Uh, the last one's terrible actually, um, and so I was like, I don't want to just keep doing a downward slide. I was like, so if I don't do well in this one, I was like, I'm just gonna call quits. You were con- well, were you, were you considering going to the older bracket? Yeah, uh, yeah, I was thinking about doing the old man stuff. Or and I don't know why I have a problem with that. Like, why should I have a problem with that? Like, I should be. Like that's where I'm supposed to go. That's where the old no, guys go. I've, no, well, that's what. That's what. Like, I shouldn't be. Uh, that that's where it is, right there. It's like no, not really. Yeah. So, so there was that, and then, uh, but we get there, and oh, and so the day before though, I'm writing the final chapter of unlocking the cage, and on that trip, I talked with uh, my professor, my my teacher, uh, Ricardo Perez. He was my coach when I was fighting MMA in Vegas, mm-hmm. and. We talked about why I wasn't very good at competing. And he said, you know, he brought up the fight that I reversed. I reversed a decision against myself uh, in Mexico. And he's like, man, he's like, that was a beautiful thing. It was a nice thing. I don't know whether or not I could do that. And but he was saying, he's like, man, he's like, no, he's like, you're you're just too nice. Uh, You you will give something that you want to someone else who wants it. Maybe because they you feel they want it more. Um, And I don't think that was really entirely the case with that. Uh, because I just felt like I didn't win the fight and that was bullshit. Like he should have won the fight. Mm-hmm. Um, but whatever, who knows? Um, but it was interesting. Well, let, well, let's talk about, let's go back to the, the San Diego in-house tournament. Like, dude, we and you roll all, all the mm-hmm. time. And there's some days where you get the best of me and vice versa. But San Diego, you, you really got in your head a little bit. Like, yeah, we were there yeah, for yeah, hours. Yeah. Consi- I mean, there were a lot of there were a lot of guys, a lot of competitors. You were there for hours. I mean, I I was sick of being there. I mean, we were just but, sitting there. But but see, those are all those are all excuses, um, and they're not legitimate because everyone else there was dealing with the same thing. So, as far as like my performance, well, those are all factors probably and why I didn't do well. So you're totally legitimate with those, um, and I shouldn't look at them as excuses. But yeah, everyone else had. I'm those just same saying, things. time to think about bullshit. Oh yeah, yeah, like yeah. time, like yeah, yeah, idle time. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Idle time to think about bullshit yeah. is, uh, is the worst. You know, and, and, and I felt like I was doing good. I felt like I was doing good because I was doing the visualization, mm-hmm. or maybe and and maybe a lot of it was I was like, oh, I'm tricking myself or whatever because I'm feeling kind of confident. But then I don't know, man. I I think I think I was so worried about a heel hook happening or. I don't oh know. yeah, because it, totally it was open. It was open rules. It was it was everything. So okay, so there. Uh, but this one, man. We so we come into Gracie Worlds, and it's funny because you had a horrible start. <laughs> so you yeah. cut, dude. Slices his toe open on. Uh, I mean, pretty deep too. We didn't notice how deep it was, but then you checked it. It's pretty yeah. deep, right? No, dude, it, and it hurt too. It was right on the top of my toe. And it was, uh, I looked down right after I did it, and I was like, there's blood. I'm like, ah, shit. And so, luckily, they had uh, EMT there, and mm-hmm. so he taped it up, did a good job taping it up. 
and it came off in the first match but it stopped bleeding by then and now it hurts a little bit but it's not bad but it, it was cool though yeah. it was cool and you you called it um that uh they took my mind off it because I, I was like yeah it, it kind of did i was like fuck it i was like <laughs> i was like well you can't start any worse than having like your your toe slit open right yeah. for a grappling match so uh you know f it let's just go for it uh so I go up first. I have some dude. Uh, did you know his name? Uh, Raphael. Raphael from Ra- from. He was at headquarters. Michigan. Uh, he would no. He uh, no. Oh, my oh, first oh match, your guy, your guy, your guy, match, your guy uh, um, Scott. Uh, Scott, I forget his last name. I just. Um, Ann Arbor, but right? he was from Ann Arbor. Ann Arbor, yeah. Ten Planet. Yeah. Um, Scott or. I, 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 I'm pretty sure it was Scott. If Sorry, it, man, we wrong. forgot your name. But uh, so I go out there. We, you know, uh, he got me. He tapped me out really quick. You know, it was about, I don't know, maybe a minute match, two minute match, maybe. Yeah. Um, got caught in a knee bar really quick. Dude, good on him. My mind wasn't where it needed to be and uh, left my foot out there. It's as simple as I can call it. But uh, so we get done with that and uh, go back to Mark and Mark's getting ready to go. And your first match was against, now this uh, is the guy. Rafael. Rafael. Yeah. He just got promoted to Purple Belt, right? Yeah, last, last night, night he did. Yeah. Awesome. He was, yeah. Uh, yeah, he was from headquarters, but he recently moved to Salt Lake City. I think I had rolled with him once before mm-hmm. at headquarters, and then I kind of realized, like, oh, man, I'm going to be going against this guy. And then, I don't know, he just told me his whole story, and then he had been dealing with You guys with got a little buddy-buddy he, buddy Yeah, before. he had been doing, had the stomach flu, and he's just a nice guy. He's a super cool guy. And so, it's like, ah, yeah, I want to win, but at the same time, this dude wants to win, and mm-hmm. he just, he's out from, you know, uh, from wherever he just moved. Um, so, but luckily, uh, dude, so in my match, I'm going against him, and I'm realizing, like, dude, he's technical. He he was he was shutting down a lot of my stuff. He he threatened me with stuff. I don't even remember. You probably remember, but I think he he probably was coming pretty close with ankle stuff. A few stuff, yeah. He had to sit out of his ankle a lot a couple of times. But you did a great job. You know, you sagged the foot and shuffled over. So yeah, mm-hmm. it was great. But yeah. Oh, yeah, and your coaching was awesome. So I, I appreciate that because I was actually able to hear this time. I was listening. I heard you say, you know, jump over the foot. I heard you say a lock. Now I heard all those things, and then I was actually doing them. Nice. Um, but there was a point where, um, dude, I was getting really tired. Uh, like, I was exhausted. And I don't think our match was that long. I think it was just nerves. Uh, but then I happened to look over, and Eddie Bravo's right there <laughs> watching the match. I'm <laughs> like, like, oh, hovering shit. Hovering right over yeah. you guys. I was like, just okay. I was like, there. I, I got to turn this on. I got to yeah. just go for it. And then, fortunately, I was able to get him in um, a triangle and then, then went to an arm, which looked, that part probably looked sloppy. Uh, the triangle felt good. But, but you were going for Dead Orchard a couple times, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 I was hoping to, I was hoping to get it, but he was pretty wide and wide dude. But you locked those long legs, man. You had that triangle in, so yeah. And Eddie saw it. it was the, it was the whole thing. It was right there, so that was cool. Yeah, that, yeah. So I, I was really happy to win a match. I was like, oh, thank God. But then I was like, oh shit, now I got to do the guy that just went against you, mm-hmm. and so. Uh, I was standing up. I was ready to go, but I was like, this is going to be awful. Um, there's no way I'm going to make it a full 10 minutes. And if there's an overtime, fuck, no, I don't want that. Uh, but luckily, the, the ref comes over. He's like, hey, he's like, we're going to put in these guys first. And so he's like, sit down and relax. And uh, Best I, I, possible outcome, oh, too. They went three dude, overtime I, I kept, rounds. Yeah, I kept telling you. I was, <laughs> like, I was like, get out, get out. I was like, I didn't want the guy to get submitted because I wanted more yeah, rest. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then Scott and I went, and, it, dude. It was I had, a good I, match. Yeah, it was a good match. You guys stood up tough. for a while. No, no real takedown. I forget how you guys got to the ground. I think he pulled I, in. I, I he pulled, tried to yeah. pass guard. But uh, yeah, I, I, it went back and forth for a little bit, you know. I had some nerve-wracking times there. But oh, yeah. He almost had me. I don't know if he had me fully mounted, but he had definitely had three-quarter mount. Yeah, no, yeah. no, for sure. You were, yeah, he had you in a precarious situation, but you held in there, and you got your lockdown back, and. And then um, you got down to the Apollo. Yeah, dude. Yeah. That's a uh, and that was from uh, Frank. Frank, I think, was the first person that showed it. And then yep. Scott Ross. We had class. I don't know. If, I think you were there that he day. He helped it out. He yeah, yeah. fine tuned it. Yeah. So that was cool. And then I didn't think it was working. Um, I didn't think the choke was working that great. But I talked with Scott last night when he was at uh, the guy, our opponent. Yeah. And uh, he told me um, the same thing. Uh, that he's like, man, he's like, the, the Apollo messed, the first one messed me up. And he's like, and then the second one, he's like, that actually put me out. And so I didn't know he had gone unconscious because yeah. I tried to help him up, but he couldn't, he didn't stand up right away. He's mm-hmm. like, dude, he's like, that's why I didn't stand up. He's like, he's like, I was, I was unconscious. Wow. Uh, so I was like, wow, I was like, that was a weird feeling. And so, but again with him, like I would do, so I was super happy that I won. <laughs> but, but me saying super happy, that's not actually, that's, that's no not true. Way. No, no, that's not you know, true. Honestly, bro, okay. And so that's you what's win, weird. You win that match. Uh, the ref, you know, he taps. Uh, I got 
way too excited. <laughs> I get way too excited, and I just slap the mats, right? And I yell, probably scare some kids <laughs> and babies around me. Uh, but you look kind of bewildered. Like, you're like, I don't, like, I don't know. You didn't know who to walk to, like, where to yeah. go. And then you, I don't even know if you really knew what yeah. you did. But, uh, uh, well, I was already thinking, uh, I was like, part of it was thinking about, like, oh, do I have another match? I was like, I was like, that, yeah, did no, I that's what, that, I was yeah. Like, I was like, did I really win yet? And, and maybe no. I was thinking, maybe I was thinking, uh, that's why I was I so know. fucking stoked. I was yeah. like, no, that's it. Like, dude, we, we were supposed to have two more guys in our division. So you would have right. had another match, mm. but they, uh, dropped out or didn't yeah. show up or, yeah. you know, and, uh, we talked about that last time. Like, is that still winning? Well, fuck yeah. We, we yeah. went down there. We, cut the weight if if it if we had to or yeah, whatever sp- so uh, spent the day spent the day uh we trained went through the nerves um so yeah i knew right away and i just don't think you you grab my like, yeah man dude you did it but but even then even then man uh, like like because we talked about it there and i was like yeah i'm happy but i kind of feel like well i should have won anyhow or you know yeah, or, or whatever it, and i dude. was wow because i was so stoked because i just i don't know i was just pretty stoked um I don't know, man. I would have been super stoked for myself. Maybe well, I'm just well, too. And it was kind of, it was kind of the almost the exact same thing. Like so, when I had the terrible day in San Diego, I remember being on the ride home, and Janine was texting me about mm-hmm. your wins. I'm like, oh fuck yeah! And so I was yeah. like, I was super happy about that. Mm-hmm. Like so, I was happier about that than than me winning. Me winning was like, I'm happy. That's cool. That, yeah. That's awesome. Like hopefully it'll help me get promoted now. Um, but, but dude, what, that's, dude, that's what's crazy. awesome is that though in San Diego it flip flopped so. The guy you went against tapped you out first, mm-hmm. and then I ended up getting him. And yeah, then revenge. same thing, same thing happened. So I guess you guys shouldn't fuck with like your training <laughs> yeah. partners, because no. Yep. But um, so that's pretty much what we want to talk about. Is like, why can't you? Well, well, I don't even know how to really put it. Like, because you said that, dude. You were like, oh, I should have, or oh yeah, oh, it was. You know, I feel bad for that dude because you came from Michigan, which is cool. You know, that's yeah, I feel yeah. bad for him too, but. Oh, man, I I was so stoked, and I was just yeah, like, uh, dude. It comes to uh, I've been thinking about this a lot last day or two, um, but and I'm actually gonna write something about it. Probably like a peak at a perfectionist because, dude, that's what it comes down to is me never being happy with anything I'm gonna do. Like I thought I was over that. I I try to pretend I'm over it. I tell myself, dude. I give people this advice all the time. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, you don't say should or need to or whatever, and put these demands on yourself, but. Dude, I hold myself to a higher set of standards than anyone else. Like, if you did something that was whatever, like, I don't think, oh, no big deal. Mm-hmm. If I did it or whatever, I'd be like, oh, well, you're a piece of shit for doing this, or you should have been doing this. or. But, uh, like, when I talked to the, the psychologist one time, like, I was listing my stuff, and everything I said, I had to, uh, it's like, yeah, I played football, but I wasn't that good. You know, I tried boxing, tried pro boxing, but I wasn't that good. I tried fighting. I went to uh, Ivy League, but only two years, you know. Yeah, so everything, always an asterisk. Everything, yeah. yeah. So I was like, you know, powerlifting competition. A- anything I did, even if I got a first place in it, for me, it was like, eh, well, I should have. You know, I was like, I should have won. I should have got that. Wow. I, and it, I don't know. And, and I downplayed that shit all my life. And it's a, it's a terrible thing. It's something that I'm really trying to stop with my, oh, there we go. Wonderful sirens in the background. You yeah, that's someone's awesome. getting arrested. <laughs> yeah, it's not or us. That's cool. Or they're headed here. Oh, shit. <laughs> they're like, not this guy you again. You don't do that anymore. No, no. Um, Let's not have that. No, that's not for us. Now. I was going to ask you, though, um, were your parents kind of underwhelming when you would get an award at school? or? Um, or I don't just think like, yeah, so. Yeah, you're supposed to. Or? I don't know. I think I think good grades were expected. Probably, I'm sure they were. I'm That's sure they. I'm sure they rewarded us for them. But I think they were expected because my sister was very smart. My brother was very smart, and so it was just something I was supposed to do. And then the same thing with teachers. I think everyone expected me. Or, who knows? That's me, just me putting my own. That's what I thought they expected. Hmm. Um, and because I knew I knew my brother. I don't know if I heard his IQ scores or what. I I, I must have. But I I knew he was a genius. Yeah. So my older brother Mike genius awesome dude uh but super smart and with like science and math and all that stuff and that wasn't me like i was good at math for a while but not like that and then i realized i got a different (laughs) i'm taking a different path (laughs) fuck calculus (laughs) fuck all that stuff like that once once it started getting hard enough to where i had to study i couldn't borrow other people's notes and uh, (laughs) look over during tests dude that was i I was a cheater too Uh, Um, that's good stuff yeah but uh but no so nothing was ever going to be good enough but it wasn't you know i, I don't know maybe it's being part of uh, a middle kid 
Um, I think my sister has the same tendencies. Uh, I don't know. I think we're just way harder on ourselves for whatever reason. Um, I was just talking to my chiropractor, the Dr. Holland, that you mm-hmm. know, um, and he was saying the same thing. Like he's like, no, Ed. He's like, but that's what drives you to succeed. He's like, that's what drives me to succeed. He's like, he's like, you do have to listen to other people when they say, hey, man, you gotta appreciate this and be happy. He's like, but at the same time, you know, that's what's gonna push you more. But you know, I don't want that for my kid. I was like, yeah, I want them to push themselves. What's but the balance? I want them to be happy. Like, yeah. dude, I was driving home, like trying to be happy in the car, like thinking about him, like. I should be fucking happy right now. Like, I went to go to win. I didn't really believe I was going to win. I don't know. Maybe at some point I tricked myself into that. Um, but, I yeah. felt like you called it from the beginning. Um, you know, you called me like, hey, man, you want to do this tournament? I kind of want to get back at it because of San Diego. And I was like, yeah, dude, let's do it. So, to me, that was like you had the intent the whole way like, yeah. to win. Um, and it was funny because me and my girlfriend were talking about it on, on our way back from the tournament. And we're like... You think Mark's like so? I'm like I'm, I'm. I'm hoping Mark's letting it in. I'm hoping he's kind of just like you know pumping up that Katy Perry, and he's like, yeah, no. Nah. And then she goes, mm. he's like me, probably not. He's probably, yeah. And I'm like, and sure enough, yeah. We talk later, and you're like, no, nah, I kind of just yeah. No, I, I text. I texted my wife. I was like, mm-hmm. I think I forget what I said. I was like, oh, I got lucky. Yeah, and, and yeah. won. I won two matches, and. uh yeah, and dude, that's what, like with fighting. I would put myself in terrible yeah. situations where I'm fighting a dude with 24 fights and I got like three or four, you know, and just shit where I'm supposed to, I'm taking on short notice and I'm supposed to lose and I don't know. Um, who well, knows? That, I feel like that's somehow different than what, what what's going on now. Yeah, I know. That, and that's what I just realized know, after I said it. I'm like, uh, I'm like, you dumb fuck. Because now, <laughs> well, you just got to find that balance because now, you know, you hear about Jobs or Michael Jordan and uh, who knows, you know, the list goes on and on. And you hear about them being assholes or this mm. or that or so competitive that they, they could be perceived as an asshole. Yeah. But it's like, no, man, they just want to, they're not happy. They're ambitious, this, that. But none of those guys have friends or it seems, you know, allegedly. Right. Or it just seems like that's not the nicest or the best way to go through it and live it. And especially for yeah. kids, like to have all that pressure and never be happy. And But yeah. is it better than just always stopping to smell the roses and always patting yourself on the back? Right. And No, it probably comes yeah. to, I think it comes to that balance. And, um, and dude, I, like I'm feeling good now. Like I think uh, this was a, this was a pretty awesome weekend. So there's another thing that was kind of cool that happened, but that I really wasn't that super happy about. And it's, um, I had a, a sale for Twist Reunion, mm-hmm. my short story horror collection. And so it, it jumps in rating rankings on Amazon from, fuck, who knows where, like towards the end, to it jumps to number one for in horror um, horror short stories. And there was like number two in uh, all short stories by a single author, number four in whatever category, got all the way to number six in all horror. Wow. So in all, yeah. in all horror books, it was number six. And I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, so most most people like I, I'm probably the only author that doesn't do this that says like oh Amazon bestseller blah 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 because I think that's all you have to do if you're on those lists. Well, my thinking is like oh well I'm only going to be on there for a couple of days and it's going to start dropping and it's because of this or that or whatever. But and not being able to be like cool man like, like this and just be happy about it. Um, it doesn't mean stop. It just yeah be happy about it. Yeah. Yeah 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 no and and and, and uh, but whatever. So I'm starting to get over it. But I'm like that with my yoga too, dude. Like, yeah. I think it, like it, it just comes down to confidence. Like it doesn't matter our age or how big or small we are. It's like confidence is confidence. Like you know, and thinking that my yoga is good or putting out the DVD or yeah. digital yeah. version and you know all that stuff. It's me questioning. Oh, well, let me, I gotta perfect it first. I gotta do this and do that. And it's like, no, nah, man, just get out there and do it. You yeah. Know? So I just. You, you prove stuff to me, Mark. You show yeah. me. Show me I no, can do that, it. That, 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 that's cool, man. And that's that's what I, that's one reason why I wanted to succeed too. I was like, oh man, I was like, I'm I'm doing what I'm doing now as far as like my jumps in jujitsu, uh, jumps and being able to do anything, not having to wear a brace on my knee. That's all your yoga, your instruction, being able to defend legs, learn legs, just improve. Well, you put the without, work in, dude. Yeah, you know. and, and I would, you know, I'd probably, I would make some jumps, but mm-hmm. I was like, I know I've made those jumps because of the yoga. I know all these other things. So, um, no, I mean, I think for it that. Flow, yeah, it flows both ways. I think our partnership just works. It just it helps out that we're the same weight, almost the same height, and that uh, you believe in the yoga, you know. Right. But, uh, yeah, man, so you end up winning. You 
go to HQ the next night, and then you got your purple belt. Well, yeah, dude. so that was one of the reasons I did it. I was like, you know what? I knew promotions were coming up. Eddie uh-huh. only does them once, a, once or twice a year now. Mm-hmm. So, and you don't have to compete, but I didn't know where I stood. Uh, blue, I haven't been training very often. I mean, when I train, it's with you. And that's what's crazy. Like, dude, we're each other's training partners. We yeah. don't have a lot of guys coming through. Um, not yet. Yeah, not yeah. yet. But I. Guys, if you want to train with us, come down Tuesday. It's awesome. Or yeah. women, we need we need partners for my wife. My wife's gonna Janine start training too. with us. Yeah, like, my girlfriend as well. Dude, I'm hungry now. I want to. Uh, we're all gonna compete. My daughter's competing. Jen's competing. Uh, I'm gonna compete in November. Uh, I'll rep the youth center probably. So just re- just uh, sorry, just dude, look at that. Yeah. That little circle of of, uh, of that. Come yeah. On, no, that, that's that, pretty. Yeah, sick. that's cool. Yeah, yeah and I started starting to enjoy like jen and i drilled the other night and because she always has questions but i think part of that too is like why i wasn't doing stuff before i think i was doubting my knowledge like i'm like oh because i don't know the fundamentals really and i know i know i think my grappling ability is better than my grappling knowledge sort of in a way me too i think the same thing about myself yeah totally agree so but you know she enjoyed it i was able to teach her some stuff and like yeah i was like well and we'll get you privates with someone else and she's enjoying it and i was like Let's just go for it. If this is what you enjoy, and she really enjoys jiu-jitsu right now, I was like, well, let's just go for it. And let's just try to get as good as we are. Like, I'm not going to go crazy. And probably next week I'm going to change this whole fucking story. <laughs> and be like, you know what? No. You know what? Fuck no. jiu-jitsu. It's no. all about yoga. Or just, you know what? I'll just stay home and just relax. No, because let's be honest, dude. You called. As of now, you've been calling this whole year. You told yourself. You're like, all right, this is going to be a good year. We're going to get to the gym. I'm going to get better at yoga. Jiu-jitsu. And you have. You made leaps and bounds. And then, uh, like I said, you called me. You're like, dude, let's do this, X, Y, Z. And then you nailed it. Mm-hmm. You set this whole thing up. You had intent the whole way. And you're just yeah. knocking them down. So you're knocking your pins down. I think we just need to keep putting pins up, but be happy with the strike that we had, yeah. you know. But keep racking up those pins again. And, you know. Yeah, no, I think, dude, I think that's what it's all about, man. I'm excited about whatever's going to happen. I was like, it'll be fun, whatever it is. I don't know if it's going to be putting whatever book is going to be next. Like, yeah. it, does, it doesn't matter. Like, We'll, we'll do that, uh, what, whether it's next competition, whether it's your DVD. like, But we will. I do want to sit down. We'll, we'll put it down on paper. I think putting it down on paper makes such a difference. It's, and I think it helps having someone else there, too, to help yeah, guide it, help, like, to I, ask you those questions. Like, okay, what do you really want? Yeah, maybe you do want this. Maybe all you really want is money or you think you, all what you want is fame or whatever. It's like, But figure out what you really want and then just do it and do the steps. It's like um, I was talking with a guy last night. Like He has everything in motion for a place. But he just needs that extra little push. He needs someone to be like, okay, well, do this, this, and this, and it'll be done. And, dude, I need that, too. Uh, so that's what uh, you, Nato, and my other friends are great at, uh, just kind of giving you those pushes. Yeah, I think it's just a little network of group of dudes you have and bouncing ideas back off each other and shitty ones pop up and good ones pop up. And yeah. sometimes someone from the outside has a good view. Yeah. No, I think I think that's totally true. Um, yeah, so I don't think we figured out shit about me. We just know that I'm a grouchy old fuck. <laughs> grouchy. <laughs> well, technically, we're not going to figure out one podcast. We had the interview your mom, your dad, your nanny, your yeah, brothers, your sisters. Yeah. I mean, I think all today was really about is just... Look, man, Sharing. I mean, yeah, I, I think we all go through it as far as confidence or, 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 or I don't know, being over-eager even. You know, you, you put all your emphasis on winning yeah. and then you don't win and then you're like heartbroken. Yeah. It's like, no, dude, you still competed. You yeah. put up a hell of a fight. And, and you know, that, was, that was one of the things yeah. I noticed. Like, dude, I, when you're watching other guys, you don't give a fuck whether or not. No. I, I never judge anyone because they lost a match. Like, never. I, dude, I, I'll see. I'm like, unless it's like maybe just if the guy had no business being out there mm. or something like that. But, dude, if a guy gets caught in something. And I saw so many people, high-level guys that I know that I've trained with that got caught in stuff yesterday. Yeah. I was like. Yeah, and, and I've never judged them. Of them. But yeah. but when we go out, before we go out, we're thinking, <laughs> I mean, that's probably in our mind. Like, oh, I don't want to embarrass myself. I don't want to. But no one gives a fuck. No, no, no one cares. We're the center of attention and people yeah. are caring about yeah. us. I mean, I try to tell myself, look, are my buddies going to abandon me? Is my girlfriend not going to think I'm hot after this? No. Well, may, maybe. I don't know. Well, that's but, why That's why I let you tap me a couple times today. <laughs> uh, I, 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 I don't know if she <laughs> told you. <laughs> Oh, that's why. I don't know if she told that's you, why. but every time you would, or maybe not every time, there weren't <laughs> there weren't that many times. No, no, we no, no, no we, we did. We, yeah, 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 I know. I'm just joking. He, and usually you get the better of me. Um, but I look over I'll at her. Say earlier, I did usually. <laughs> yeah. but now I think it's getting a little different. But I think I'm gonna have to. Yeah, I look over at Janine. I was like, I let him. 
she did. She said, <laughs> yeah. But you know what? That's when we're having a good dude. We we and had we had hard rolls, but we were fucking around, having a good time. We figured uh, out some leg positions. Yeah. We got out of yeah. No, I I agree. Uh, I think if we can carry that mindset, or not just us, but anybody in general, like if you go compete. You rolled so many times. Mm-hmm. You know, you've done that so yeah. many times. So if you can just have that playful attitude, well, find a balance between that playful attitude and then let those nerves take over and go. Like uh, that fight or flight. Yeah. Uh, you got to go. Uh, I definitely think that was my problem. I was a little bit too much in flight mm-hmm. instead of fight, you know, uh, which is, that's me. I beat myself. Yeah. So that's fine. Well, no, that's him. He mm-hmm. had a great day. He was on, he was on point. Mm-hmm. But uh, no, I think find that balance, man. Find that balance. Yeah, dude, I just had something fucking super brilliant to say. But I think everything. I was like, but your brilliance. Oh, um, I mentioned a little bit to you earlier about, but Eddie's new promotions yesterday were like two and a half hours or two hours and fifteen minutes. Um, but it was pretty awesome. Like listen to like, dude, for me to have to listen to anyone talk that long, that could be hard. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, but Eddie's funny. But and what he was saying, like he had a long talk with. Uh, the white belts and he started out by saying like you know what even if you've only been training like two months four months he's like do you know how much better you are at killing people (laughs) than (laughs) than anyone else that does not train you know he's like and and he you know someone that's trained for like four months he's like yeah i'll put you against anyone that has they don't have any jiu-jitsu experience Uh, unless they're like a freak but like your average person um so man and that's what i got to see last night too like and, and we see at our gym Dude, it's never too late to do it. You're never too out of shape to do it. Um, yeah, yeah. You know, just find, find the right gym. We have an awesome women's program at, at 10th Planet Youth Center. It's I shouldn't, I shouldn't say we, but it's uh, because it's only women. and It's it, taken off. And because they're comfortable and they, they know, I don't know, like there, there are programs for everyone. Uh, don't think that you can't do it because you're too old. Like I'm 44 and that's what's cool. I, like, I realize, you know what, right now I feel like I'm, I'm hungry. I want to push it. Uh, like, well, might as well try to let's get even better. Get your at this. purple belt at forty four, man. Yeah, no. That's awesome. Yeah, you know, and I am happy about that. This is the first thing because with my blue belt, I, I got my. I was just thinking about this other night. I think, I think I got my blue belt, dude. After only a couple months of training, mm-hmm. uh, because I was gonna fight, so I never felt like I earned it. Like maybe I drilled some stuff, and maybe I learned some stuff. But I felt like I was only given that. And so when I came back to it after all this break, eight years of not training, I put myself back to white because I was like, when I started under 10th Planet System, dude, I would get destroyed by everyone, including white belt. So I was like, mm-hmm. this is embarrassing. I was like, no, I'm back to a white belt. That's where my knowledge is right now. Uh, so when I got my blue belt, I felt a little bit of pride. But I was like, well, shit, I'm just back to where I should have been, you know? Uh, but See, this is. There's that uh, yeah, taking a step exactly. back, two steps back, and just one forward. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. So, but now, like this one, I was like, okay, I feel like I earned it. I was like, and if I hadn't, dude, if I hadn't won that competition Mm -hmm. and I was awarded my blue belt, especially if I lost yesterday, I mean, my purple, yeah, I would have, I would have felt like he just gave it to me and that I didn't deserve it and he was doing it for this reason. I'm not really a purple, but like, so it took that to kind of do it, um, which is crazy. So, but I feel better. Um, uh, you should have your purple. Uh, hopefully that's going to happen soon. Uh, no, hundred percent. And that's, uh, that's ridiculous. Well, I shouldn't say that's ridiculous. I mean, everyone, whatever we get our, we get our belts from whatever, but seeing everybody, seeing everybody that was belted up yesterday, I think that's why I felt like, okay, these are, these are my peers. Um, I've, I've been training with them. We have good roles. You know, they're, they're, I think I'm about like, they're probably more technical. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's cool. Like I, I feel like, okay, I, I'm there and you're, so you're hundred percent there. So, um, yeah. But until you get yours, I'm going to rub that shit in. <laughs> 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 I really was going to show up today with the, the belt on and just tell you to like, to, to scoot over out of the, out of your yoga position. I'll like, I'll take this shit. <laughs> That would have been funny. Been good. Yeah. Man, you got some gems. You got to pull I, them out. I know. I do. Oh, I'm pretty funny. Man. I'm pretty fucking funny. But anyways, you know what? We got a lot of shit to do. Um, kids had to jiu-jitsu today. Yeah, uh, to little it. Jake, my uh, three-year-old, is getting back into it. We changed his – we fixed his uh, nap schedule so uh-huh. he can actually go to class. So he's pumped. So he'll be at class today. I'll go watch that. And then uh, my daughter will be training with all her friends. Jen will be training. She's – Rocking the unlocking the cage rash guard, yeah. make, making me proud. Yeah, uh, yeah man, I'm, I'm, I'm excited. I, I told more people that story about her training and like, how great she's doing um, than anything else yesterday.
thing or That's the competition. Awesome, so yeah, That's and awesome. I'm proud of her. Uh, proud of all the women for doing it. But uh, yeah, let's. I say we finish this shit, man. And you up. you can go teach some kids. I'll go watch them. But <laughs> let's um, do it. we end every episode with uh, Brightside. It's almost over. Chapter seventeen. I don't know what's going on. I haven't been listening. I uh, haven't read the book in a while either. But it's. I know it's. Uh, it's, it's coming part. to the good part. It's I bet. Gritty. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. No, it's. Uh, it's coming up. And you know what I might do? You know what? Uh, I don't think I've shared it on here yet. So what? Let's watch the Brightside trailer. Um, my buddy Soul did the music for it. Hopefully, I kind of fucked up the editing on it. I, I handle all the editing on this stuff, and that's a problem. I need to hire someone to do that. But anyways, I like the music. Uh, I love the narration. It's T. Quillen, who does the audiobook. Mm-hmm. Uh, so here's that, and then it will lead right into Chapter 17 of Brightside. Uh, if you want to hear the whole book without commercials, um, get on Audible. Otherwise, listen to the old episodes. We have them all on there. All right, thanks for listening, and we will talk to you guys next Peace. week. See you. This is my 100th day in Brightside, the day I swore my life would change. This is where I always end up no matter how much I don't want to. I can't look at my Bossberg 12 gauge. American Metal. If I look, I'll never explain how day 100 got so fucked up. The day's gonna end soon. One of two ways. Fairy tale ending. <laughs> yeah, right. Princess is dead. My dad always warned my gift would become a curse if I wasn't careful. Was I suicidal? We all were. But not so bad we'd ever do it. But that was before they found us and brought us to Brightside. Before day 100. Chapter 17 I promised Wayne I'd talk to Sharon, but there's no point telling her shit. If I do and she agrees, there isn't a damn difference. But if she freaks like I know she will, then I'm only putting Danny in more danger. Wayne's going to be there whether I talk to Sharon or not, and his big ass isn't going to climb down a rope by himself. And he's going to want in on that getaway vehicle, whatever that might be. I'm such an idiot for not asking Sharon for more details. I was too caught up in arguing about Sarah and Danny being sent to the cabin and my father turning me in. Still, I have to call her. Sarah and Danny have to be included in the getaway. I take out the cell phone, the one Sharon said couldn't be traced. There a problem? Those are the first words out of Sharon's mouth. I almost tell her that there are more problems than she can handle. Just one, I say. Sarah and Danny are both coming. Absolutely not. Then I'm not firing a fucking shot and that helicopter will be sitting right outside the mine shaft. You can kiss your little plan goodbye. Sharon's breathing. And while I can't hear her thoughts, I know that damn mantra is on full blast in her head. It's your call, I say. But I'm not doing shit until I know they're in. Sharon's teeth click a few times. She says, Fine. Yeah? I have your word? As if her word means anything. Yes. But if they get caught on the way to the cave, or if they're one second late, we're not waiting. Okay. And Joe? What? If you fail, the deal's off. Yeah. I start to ask how we're getting off this mountain, if we actually pull this off. But Sharon's already hung up. I know Sharon has something waiting for us when we get out. A bus, or a car, or even a plane. She told me there were others in the real world. Ones yet to be discovered. Willing to help us. Unlike Danny, Sarah, and me, there were a lot of thought thieves rolling in cash. They broke into banks, already knowing the security codes. 
they bought stocks on silent information. They took down casinos one table at a time, knowing exactly what the dealer or other players were holding, unless they were too stupid or goddamn greedy. There were probably hundreds, even thousands, still on the outside. It makes me wonder how many thought thieves are still sitting in power. The president himself only signed the law after the panic had gotten out of control. I like the idea of the commander-in-chief being one of us. It would explain his second term, how frequently he fires his top officials. I imagine the White House is filled with people looking to take him down, but he'd know every move before they could make a grab at his job. Even Karl Pepper, the man who supposedly saved the president's life, never seemed to be fully responsible for stopping the assassination. When they played the scene on the news, the president definitely ducked before Carl clobbered the gunman. Carl was one of the first sent to Brightside, but no one has seen or heard from him since. He's either dead or locked up so tight he's wishing he were. I can't imagine what Carl must be going through. He was a hero for a week, then a villain for life. I'm sure there's not a second of the day he doesn't wish he would have let the gunman fire the shot. The president he saved banished him for being a traitor, and I can't fathom how that must feel. Even though my own father turned me in, at least he tried to offer me a way out. Carl is just fucked. Same as all the other brightsiders we'll leave behind. I need to stop thinking about this pointless crap. Who cares what Carl is thinking, or if the president is a thought thief? Neither is going to help me one bit. I have a job to do, and I need to shut off my head. I know I'm doing it to distract myself, to keep from thinking about the chopper's gun spinning and firing 50 rounds into my chest before I can even take aim. But if I can't control my thoughts, I'll for sure end up dead. Sarah's wearing a stocking cap, parka, and these huge sunglasses Rachel left at my place on day 39. I'm wearing my puffy jacket, wishing I had a trench coat. The shotgun is practically sticking out of the bottom of my pants, and it's making me walk like someone who's trying to hide a gun. There's an elastic drawstring at the bottom of the jacket. I pull it tight to keep the Mossberg in place. But I keep picturing it sliding down and blowing off my leg. Sarah asks if I have a duffel bag or something. Says this just looks stupid. I run to the closet and have to pull Rachel forward to slide out the bag. It's covered in blood, which is only going to draw more attention. I rummage through the closet, through all of Dad's boxes, when I find a backpack. It's too small to hide the Mossberg, but it's better than keeping it in my pants. So I field strip the gun. Not all of it, just break it down so it'll fit. Assembling it is going to take more time, time I don't know if I'll have but it's the best option I've got. The walk to the office is freezing because the sun is about to set. I'm wearing headphones, but my iPod is turned off. I'm just silently talking to Sarah as we move down the street. Most people are at work or locked away in their apartments. Wayne has everyone on edge. The building where I work has a small crowd out front, but I don't see any boots. Neither Sarah nor I know how many people heard she's being sent to the cabin, but we can't take any chances. I have to go in alone. We keep our distance and switch up the plan. It's better this way, because Sarah needs to draw the helicopter to me. She slips off through the square. I watch her and have the fear this might be the last time I ever see her. I want to chase her down, tell her how sorry I am she got pulled into this. But again, it's not going to help me do what I have to do. I flick on my iPod, crank it as loud as it can go before entering the building. There are a few people getting into the elevator, so I take the east stairs. The shotgun pieces clang around in my backpack as I climb. Luckily, no one is in the stairwell, though I sort of wish there were. I want someone to catch me, to make me go back to my apartment. The cabin doesn't seem like such an awful outcome right now. My hand goes to the door handle, but I can't open it. It's not locked. 
I'm just freaking out. I keep thinking about how I almost plummeted off the side. Sarah had to pull me up to save my life. I'm leaning against the wall and I can feel the sweat soaking through my clothes, which doesn't make me feel all that bad because it's fucking hot in here in the stairwell. I decide to put the shotgun together. If the helicopter flies over while I'm assembling it, they'll kill me. Sarah also needs time to get to the boots. She's supposed to say Wayne is in this building. I told her to keep her distance, let others spread the word. But I know she's not going to risk Danny to save herself. I just hope they don't recognize her before they head this way. The barrel clicks, and I pull out the shells. Slide in two. I have another dozen in the backpack, but I'll never get the chance to reload. It's one shot. The Mossberg is in my hands, and I keep thinking about Rachel. If someone were to see me, I don't know what I'd do. I guess I'd have to shoot, but that's only going to alert the boots, the helicopter, and the gunner. I suddenly realize this plan's already fucked. Sarah's going to tell them Wayne's here, meaning they'll already be looking to kill him, meaning as soon as they see I'm armed, I'm dead. I'm starting to think this really is all a setup. Melvin could get a hell of a lot closer to the helicopter than me, but Sharon said I was the only one for the job. They're probably already at the cave escaping, while I'm up here like an idiot holding a shotgun that will draw all the attention. I'm hating my father right now for trusting that lying bitch, for giving me the shotgun instead of a rifle, which I could fire from cover instead of standing right out in the open, making it so easy to take me out. Plus, I don't even have an escape plan. The helicopter will definitely beat the boots here, but it won't be long before they secure the building. At least Sarah's not with me. Danny either. They might still have a chance. This is what I'm telling myself as I hear the distant thwump of the chopper getting louder and louder. I don't even have to put my ear to the door to know it's almost here. Sarah's supposed to meet me at the pond. I know she won't wait forever. I told her she can't be late to the cave. It's Danny who's important. I just hope she doesn't hold out too long. Sharon won't hesitate to leave her and Danny behind. I wonder what's going to happen with Wayne. When Sharon sees him, she's going to shit herself. I wish I could be there to see her face. I just hope Wayne doesn't get Danny killed. My hand is on the door handle, and my heart feels like it's the size of my head. The Mossberg at my side, my finger just above the trigger. Everything's tunneling. I can't breathe. It sounds like the helicopter is circling. I need to time this right. Wait until it's on the other side of the building before coming out. Voices fill the stairwell, but they're not coming up. Everyone's fleeing meaning the boots are probably already here. They'll sweep every floor. I've run out of time. The chopper is as loud as ever. I wait for a couple of seconds until it's a little quieter, hoping I can make it to the wall next to the air conditioners before the gunner sees me. My hand presses down, the click of the door. At least this will be quick. I throw open the door and I'm practically blind from the sun. I stayed too long in the stairwell, and my eyes can't adjust. The chopper's coming around, and my finger goes to the trigger. It's so loud and bright. I press my back against the wall, hold the shotgun to my chest. I'm closing my eyes, picturing Lily and Rachel and my parents. Dad's telling me I can't be afraid to pull the trigger. But suddenly I realize that fear might be my only way out of this. The chopper is less than two seconds from seeing me with this shotgun. There's no way I can pull this off. Not like this. So I drop the gun. Kick it so it's under the metal folding chair. The one I used to salute the flag and sing like a goddamn lunatic. That's exactly what I have to look like. A man who's lost his mind. I take off running. Waving my arms, screaming at the top of my lungs. He's in the stairwell! Wayne King is coming down! 
The gunner's hands are wrapped around steel, ready to open fire. I have no idea if he can understand a word I'm saying. But I just keep screaming that Wayne's heading down the stairs and start pointing over the edge. I'm right up against it, looking over, seeing the ground. But somehow, with all the adrenaline, I'm not afraid. I'm just screaming, Down! Down! The gunner must understand enough. Because he's saying something to the pilot, who starts circling around to the front of the building. He's descending. The rotor now even with the ledge. They're looking in the windows. Looking for Wayne. I turn back to the wall, where the shotgun is, and take off running. I try to pick it up, but my hand smacks against the folding chair. The chopper sounds like it's starting to pull away to get a better view. I flip over the chair, grab the gun, and run back to the ledge. The crowd down below is staring up at the chopper. I see them through the spinning blades, moving so fast it's just this translucent swirl. I tell them to fucking move even though they can't hear me. I raise the barrel and aim it right at the center of the blades. One shot. That's all I get. I hold my breath, just like Dad taught me. One eye closed, shoulder relaxed, arm steady. Someone down below sees what I'm about to do and screams something. The crowd looks up, and I'm waving my hands to tell them to get the fuck away from there. The pilot must see them, because the chopper begins to rise. I don't have a choice. The gunner is going to have me in his sights any second. My finger curls around the trigger, just like Rachel's and Grandpa's before everything went dark. The blast is louder than the rotor, and the kickback practically separates my shoulder, searing pain shooting down my arm. But I don't move. I just watch the buckshot spark off the blades, which slow down to the point I can see all four. Then the chopper begins to tilt. The pilot's trying to pull up or set it down, I can't tell. I just see the crowd running, and the blades grinding and carving into the street. Sparks and metal spray into the air and sidewalk. The fire isn't instantaneous, but it doesn't take long before the entire helicopter explodes. Two women are thrown back. A guy is holding his face, obviously burned and ripped up by the shards of metal. The gun is still in my hands as I back up nearly trip. I stare into the sun as the crackling sounds mingle with screams. What the hell have I done? The door closes behind me as I enter the stairwell. I'm against the wall and shaking. The backpack is on the floor, and I just stare at it, knowing I need to break down the shotgun, but I hear voices coming up from the first floor. The boots are here, and I have nowhere to run. They're going to open fire. My fingers fumble for the shells, but I can't get a grip. It's like they're covered in oil. I look over the side. Someone is definitely coming. A seven-floor climb, and it's all over. I see the next level down, the door that leads to my office. I grab the pack and race down the stairs. The voices are getting closer. I stay against the wall. My foot misses a step, and I nearly fall, my ass almost hitting the stairs, but I keep moving, flinging myself toward the door. My hand finds the handle and I quickly slip in, expecting to see Carlos and Alex and all my co-workers ready to tackle me. But the floor is empty, everyone evacuated. My office is right there, and I think about hiding, crawling under my desk, curling into a ball, curling up so tight that I wake up and find myself back on the couch with Michelle and Lily, the TV still on Letterman, and my ears fine. No flashbang, no gunshots into Lily's ribs. All of it just a terrible dream. But hiding in my office isn't going to keep me alive. I need to get to the cave to find Danny and Sarah. If Wayne's holding Danny and Sharon refuses to let them join her, Sharon won't hesitate. She'll tell Melvin to take them both out. I'm sure by now they have guns. I have to keep moving. When I get to the elevators, I see the red numbers rising. If the doors open, I might get off a shot, but it stops one floor down. My lungs start working. I lean against the wall, trying to figure out how the hell I'm going to get out of here. I can see Carlos's office. Think about just climbing out the window. One less floor than Paul fell, maybe I'd just break an ankle. Then I hear the stairwell open. Whispers. They're checking offices. 
looking for Wayne. For me. My finger goes to the trigger, but I remember I didn't load it. I'm digging around in the backpack. An office door opens. A voice says, Clear. I'm picturing the floor plan. There are only three offices between the stairwell and the elevators. A different voice, another. Clear. I finally get a shell in my hand. I'm sliding it in, trying to click the barrel closed as quietly as possible. Then a voice whispers, Joe. I turn, ready to fire, when I see Wendell peering out from the bathroom. He's waving me in with that big, meaty paw. He seems friendly, more friendly than whoever is searching our offices, so I step towards him. I'm ten feet from the bathroom. I hear bootsteps, turn around, and back into the bathroom so I can still take a shot if they come around the corner. Wendell shuts the door without making a sound, holding the handle so there isn't a click. Then his fat finger presses to his lips, as if I need to be reminded to stay quiet. The whispers are at the elevator. I can hear them through the door. I push Wendell back and put my ear against the wood and listen. They must be giving hand signals. It's quiet, but I know they're coming. I look around the bathroom. The stalls aren't going to keep me hidden for more than a few seconds. They'll just kick in the door. A walkie-talkie goes off. A voice tells them someone is on the roof. Bootsteps running, fading until I hear the faint sound of the stairwell door slamming shut. Wendell exhales. Thinks we're safe, but I know we're not. I only heard one set of boots running. There were definitely two whispers. I silently tell Wendell to get back against the wall. I press myself against the sink. The small puddle of water on the counter seeps into my pants. The gun's aimed at the door. I see the handle slowly turn. Sweat drips into my eyes, but I'm trying not to blink. The door begins to open. I see the barrel of the revolver, the eyes of the newbie. The boot that was guarding Robert's door so no one could see him swinging from the ceiling. His dick still hard. The newbie enters. He's shaking, staring down the Mossberg. He's telling me to drop it, but I'm not moving. Wendell's against the wall. The newbie doesn't see him. He just keeps telling me to put the gun down. His voice trembles. His finger tight against the trigger. I know he's going to fire, whether he wants to or not. I stay real still, knowing even a twitch will get him to take the shot. Okay, I tell him. I'm putting the gun down. Yeah, yeah, that's good. I bend forward, gently placing the shotgun on the wet floor. He tells me to kick it towards him. I do it. I just want to get out of here, I say. He looks confused, as if I'm telling him I'm from another planet. He stretches out his legs and puts his foot on the Mossberg, slides it back, the revolver still aimed at my chest. He takes one hand off the gun, goes for the walkie-talkie, his eyes never leaving mine. He fumbles the walkie, nearly drops it. Wendell's inching forward, and I can hear his fucking breath from here. The newbie starts to turn, but Wendell drives his shoulder into his stomach and plows him into the paper towel dispenser. I grab the newbie's arm, pry the revolver from his hand. Wendell's got him against the sink now, and the newbie's flailing, his hand finding Wendell's face, trying to force the big fellow off. Wendell lifts, and the newbie is off the ground a second before Wendell slams him down. The newbie's head cracks against the sink. His body slumps to the wet floor and I can't tell if he's dead or just knocked out. Wendell's breathing in clumps, like he's about to have a heart attack. He drags his sleeve across his lips and just stares at the newbie. I want to tell him thanks, but the whole thing is just too crazy. I keep my eyes on Wendell until he finally turns. He's more shocked than me. You okay? I ask. Wendell nods. Okay. Okay, I repeat trying to think. The newbie's body is still splayed on the floor. There's no way we'll be able to explain it to the boots. You, uh... Wendell takes a second to catch his breath. You have to get to my sister. 
What? You have to help her escape. She's working in the deli. I didn't even know Wendell had family here. For a second, I think Wendell might be a part of Sharon's club. But he tells me he just learned about it. Overheard someone's thoughts. He says Sharon would never let him in. He says, I'm too fat. A voice comes through the newbie's walkie-talkie. The voice says there's no one on the roof. He's coming down. Her name's Becky. She's at the deli. You have to get her. You have to. Wendell's eyes are as wide and pleading as I've ever seen. Okay, I tell him. We'll go get her. No, he says. Just you. The ding of the elevator. One set of boots. I grab the shotgun. Wendell picks up the revolver. You know how to use that? Wendell shakes his head no. Just squeeze, and don't close your eyes. Wendell nods, but he's so out of breath, he can't hold the gun still. If someone walks in, I'm going to get shot from both directions. The stairwell door opens and shuts. The boots are moving, but not towards us. There's a muffled conversation. I decide to peek out, figuring they're going to come here eventually. The elevator doors are still open. Follow me. No. God damn it, just do it. I'm staying. Wendell thinks. Just go. There's no time to argue. I take off. Angle my body to slip in just before the doors close. My fingers mash the button. I hear the boots. The bathroom door clicks shut. He's in there, one of them says. Their yelling is muffled. I can't tell if one of the voices is Wendell. The lower the elevator goes, the harder it is to hear. But the next six quick sounds are unmistakable. The elevator slows. It's about to hit the first floor. I shove the shotgun up under my jacket, angle it so it's not poking me in the chin. Then the door starts to open, and I immediately regret it. I should have kept it out. Who knows what's waiting? Luckily, there are people everywhere. Everyone jostling toward the front doors. I keep my head down and sink into the crowd. Two of the boots are on walkie-talkies. I stay hidden behind a few brightsiders. We're almost out the door when the voice over the walkie-talkie says they got the guy. Wendell's dead. <laughs>